Hello everyone, my name is Abbas Jain and I'm reporting for First Updates Now. Today with me I have here one of the top rookie teams of last year and this year, Team 18438 Wolfpack Machina from Massachusetts. Just an amazing robot all around, so much to unpack and we're going to do that right here in a couple minutes. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. What if hands-on learning today led to real-world application tomorrow? MSOE. Rethink what's possible. So let's start with your guys' overall engineering design process. You know, like, it's not really usual for a team to go and have such, like, a complex robot that does so many different functionalities and all just in a unique way. So, you know, what went into that? How do you guys decide what you do at every season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at the beginning of this season, we decided we wanted to create an adaptable robot. So we created a suspension system so that we could go over the barriers um, at any angle and at any position. So we're able to go over and go into the other team's warehouse if we needed. We can um, go over the barriers if the other team needs to go through the gap. So we have a lot of options that other teams aren't able to do. We also have super long um, linear slides, which gives us the ability to sit at the carousel and then cycle ducks into the mid goal. And we can also, with our long slides, um, score on the shared hub from outside the the area the, the warehouse yeah so I mean looks like you guys like versatility adaptability those are like two of the key things that goes into your design process and you know you talked to, you mentioned a suspension design so like did you guys decide on a suspension from like day one is this suspension system the exact thing you guys had like on kickoff day how has it evolved throughout the season uh, and is it something you would look into doing for future seasons as well um, yeah, so at the start of the season we pretty much decided that we would like to be able to cross the barrier wherever we wanted to, whenever we wanted to, but our initial design certainly did not look like this at all. Our very first design was a rocker design similar to the Mars rover, and then we went on to um, do a more standard trailing arm design. And this is our sixth full iteration, but those are some of two of the most um, influential. So our design, the idea behind it is essentially to have a trailing arm suspension, but in both directions. So um, if we get hit, if we're driving over the barrier in this direction, we get hit, yeah. Then it will deflect up and back like this in this direction and rotate around a point right here. But it will work identically in the other direction, which is the key. Um, the key behind it of why it crosses the barrier so well in either direction anywhere on the field. Yeah, and you know, going with a suspension design, is that something you took like from your experiences last season? Or, you know, like how did your experience as a rookie team in your first year evolve like and help you guys make decisions in your second in their second year? Um yeah, so this design is something that I don't think we would have really imagined doing at all for last year and probably something that we won't imagine doing again. Very specific for this game, but um yeah, I think at the beginning of the season, um, we really just wanted to tackle like a very difficult engineering challenge, even if it might be better um, scoring-wise to go through the gap. We just really, really wanted to um, tackle the design challenge of having um, of going over the barriers. Yeah, and I think having like that desire to tackle an engineering challenge and really just like solve all aspects of it, you know, beat it to death until just the whole system works every single time, no matter what, is something that's really impressive that you guys have showed with your whole robot. All right, let's go on to a different uh, mechanism on your robot. You guys mentioned that you're able to duck cycle. I think one thing that's very crucial to that is getting the ducks off the carousel. So why don't we talk about that? Yeah, definitely. So here's our duck spinner. At the beginning of the season, we went with an originally standard, like rigidly mounted wheel, but we found that that didn't put us in the right position to pick up ducks. So we, during a suspension meeting, actually, we came up with the idea of having a suspended duck spinner. Now, what this allows us to do is, first of all, it gives us an 8.9 times uh, more range. So Owen, could you like make it go out? Yeah, as you can see, it's got this whole range here that it can cover and that allows it to constantly stay in contact with the carousel, even when there's some tension on it. So this servo right here sets the position of this little plate in the middle, and then this mechanically adapts to the new point of equilibrium that the plate sets. 
and this allows us to be in the perfect position to spin ducks off. Yeah, no, that's super, super innovative. Uh, and after you have spun a duck off, let's go over to your intake. So we can see that you guys have multiple levels of uh, tubing on your intake, you know, not just everything spinning vertically as uh, surgical tubing typically does, but also intake that spins horizontally, sort of like uh, people that had vertical ring intakes in Ultimate Goal. And so what was the decide? What was the decision between uh, behind having this like horizontally spinning tubing? Is it something you had all the way from the beginning or is it something you added later? Yeah, so earlier we only had this upper um, intake here, but then we added these side sweepers to increase our reliability of intaking ducks. So after we added them, um, the, we went up by four times in reliability. So we were we could be able to cycle more ducks into the mid goal and get more points. And yeah, so we have the side sweepers here, which rotate, and then the, once they go through there, it goes into this upper roller and then into the bucket here. And it seems like for your guy to transfer the power between your front rollers and your side sweepers, you guys have belt that's twisted, is that correct? Yeah. So what did, how did you guys decide to do something like that? Like, was it just the original design you guys had? Did you see it from anywhere else? You know, what went into that? I think it was kind of just like a trial and error. We were testing it out and we found that we didn't think it, it's obviously not the first thing that comes to mind, but we realized that it works and it hasn't, it works great for us. So yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, another thing I really want to ask about is you guys keep throwing around all these numbers, you know, four times in reliability, 8.9 times more range. I think something that's really important is for teams to do a lot of qualitative testing, really, or quantitative testing, sorry, define like how, how, how they're improving, how their, uh, how their mechanisms function. And how do you guys uh, do that? Yeah, so midway through the season, we kind of identified that, especially if we were interested in some uh, like Innovate Design Awards, that we need to do some more iteration testing to kind of quantitatively say like, hey, this is better than our last design. So we had a couple of our team members who aren't here today kind of step up and say like, we're willing to do this. So they spent like a couple weeks just thinking about how we can objectively say one thing is better than the other. So. For instance, like a metric we use for our suspension system that was really effective was airtime, because this suspension spends no time in the air, which is like, you know, obviously energy wasted. Every second you spend in the air, you're probably going to turn a little bit, and then also you're not accelerating. Sure. So it's not as fast as it could be. And we found that this spends no time in the air, opposed to our rocker, which spends, you know, a ton of time in the air. Yeah, thank you. That's super insightful. I hope teams really take a lot from that. I think quantitative testing is something that would really elevate teams to the next level. All right, we've talked a lot about your intake, carousel, suspension, everything. Let's get to how you actually score, right? How does your uh, slide system work? What degrees of freedom does it have? Let's take a look at your deposit, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, so we have um, essentially a really, really long extension. Could you go out to the duck position? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it is a very, very long extension. Um, I think it's six stages of parallel um, Misumi slides, but then the entire thing is on an angle. So this is for scoring like really, really far out. So say maybe this is for the share tub. I think this is for the share tub. But then if you bring it back in and then go up to high. But yeah, that one. But then also for scoring close range, our entire slide assembly is able to lift up. And we did this because um, at the one of our goals we did identify at the very beginning of the season was that we wanted to be able to cycle ducks um, from the carousel. And obviously that's a very different slide position from scoring normally. Um, but we wanted to make sure they were all integrated into one mechanism so we could like concentrate all of our um, designing and time on making this one mechanism really good. So we made just an adaptable, adaptable mechanism that's able to score from really far away or right up next to the hub or um, from anywhere. And yeah. Yeah, and no, that I mean, that's all really, really impressive. What was like the biggest change that went into your slide system throughout the season? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that changed on our slides was um, not too much on the slides themselves, but on this bucket, we added um, color sensors onto it, which allowed us to, um, through lots of code, which I think Colin's going to talk about in a second, um, detect once a piece of freight has been intaken, and then we're able to close this flap right here, prevent anything else from coming in, and then reverse the intake and shoot everything else out, which allows us to just dive right into the warehouse. We don't even have to be able to see the freight. And then our controllers will rumble once a piece of freight has been in the bucket, and then the intake will automatically reverse, and then then we know to just drive out, and we don't even have to think about it. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. I think you guys have given an excellent overview of the hardware on your robot. 
I mean, just watching these super fluid motions during the match, in this interview, everything, it's very obvious that you guys have excellent software as well. So, Colin, from my understanding, you guys are sensory overloaded with with this robot. Do you want to give an overview of all the sensors? Yeah, so, um, I guess kind of starting from what we mostly use throughout the whole match. Um, oh, right. Um, I can just... Send it if you want. Yeah. Um, there's two uh, color sensors, Rev um, version 3 color sensors in our bucket that actually help us to detect when items have gone in. Um, and then also during autonomous we need navigation, so we get that from encoders that are in our drive motors um, using WPI lib uh, two-wheel odometry. Um, and then we also get that from distance sensors that are here, uh, exactly mirrored on the other side, and then one that is right here under our duck spinner. And that means that when we go into the warehouse, when we're within uh, kind of a certain angle threshold of the walls, we can actually use the distance sensors to regain really precise localization so that even after we've traveled over the barriers, we still know where we are. Um, and I think something that's really cool about a lot of our sensors is that we found because of these slides, which run on a custom PID feed forward loop, um, we needed kind of a faster loop time in our code. Um, so all of these sensors actually run on a library we developed called um, Better Sensors and are about to release um, that basically lets us pull sensors at a certain rate, so every 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. Um, and we also actually found that the color sensors could be significantly improved with a slight change to the driver, where rather than every time you asked it for red, it would get you red, green, blue, alpha, and return you red. Um, every time a loop, or every 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds or whatever we set, it just gets all the colors and then we just cache all of those which essentially cuts every sensor pull down by four times because i2c reads take forever yeah i mean i'm sure people watching this interview are going to watch your whole thing about that a couple times over that's so much information so useful as well um you know did you guys add any sensors like after your progress throughout the season or did you like have all of these sensors from day one kickoff <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone on my team is laughing because the distance sensors we added a day before we packed for Worlds. Oh um, we had basically developed and tested a lot of the code for these before um, and then just decided that uh, it probably at some point wasn't uh, really necessary because odometry was being so accurate. Um, and then a day before uh, Worlds we decided that it was actually necessary because our autos uh, kept being really unreliable when we tried to get them to go faster and faster over the barrier. Um, so we actually put them all on, implemented the code that we had already done, um, and that let us actually get really reliable autos um, at Worlds, and uh, hopefully if we can fix some things tonight, uh, really reliable autos for the rest of MTI. <laughs> so thank you guys, Wolfpack. I think everybody really learned a lot from you guys. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm a boss. What if hands-on learning today led to real-world application tomorrow? MSOE. Rethink what's possible. Apply the skills you gain as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.